It's the Jabba's Tears Podcast. I am Janelle from HR here with Sir Lucas and Miss Black and Nancy Ashley on the background. Um, before we do start, do you have a name? Who? Do you want to go back? Oh, Stan. Huh? Wait, do you want a nickname or do you want like Stan the man? Yeah, like... I call me Stan, so I go with Stan. Okay, we got to respect Leo's, Leo's assistant, Stan. So we have a new team member. I'm going to change your name eventually. No. You That's formed the shield of a black He child. just wanna, he wanna just be close to He formed the shield. Well, shield's no more, so. What about that? But we do have a new, um, I guess, intern um, of the Java Six Podcast. We have Stan back. Um, but do you wanna come and share? Stan the intern. Stan, Stan the intern, I like that one. That's it. Yeah, that's it. We got Stan the intern. What's up, y'all? There you go. Black excellence all around. Um, thank you for everyone that joined us on the live feed. This shit is hilarious. You should hire a white person? You should hire a white person. You should hire a white person. You know, so every time we hire everybody. No, I want to hire a white person. So every time I come in, white person clap. So you clap for me every time I come in. That's bad racist. That's not 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 racist. Listen. Yo, listen. You need an intern. I'm a person get an intern just to clap every time that I come in the room. So say that. I'm going to get an intern to have someone clap for me, but not just a white intern. How about like a fat ass cops that ass when you walk in the room? We are actually. Wow. That's not happening at all. So thank you. All right. So let's continue. This ain't an ass type of show. Let's continue. Anyway, thank you for everyone that's watching the live here. We appreciate you guys. Um, we do appreciate everyone that has to subscribe to our YouTube page. We are almost at our goal of 500 subscribers within a year, um, a year and a half almost. So that is such an amazing accomplishment. I feel like every time So Wilkins updates us on numbers and stats and things like that, I'm just like, but how? What are we doing? But once again, we can't do anything without the viewers. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I don't know, but this one is over here, cha-cha-chaing. So I'm like, what are you doing? Well, Mr. Black fixes himself and gets himself together. Uh, before we do open up the first segment, you know what I've been watching again? What? Being Mary Jane on BET. Why are we talking about this? That show is fire. That show is fire. It's random and What's I'm just No, no, okay, so here's the thing. So I was watching one and two religiously, like faithfully, because Mary Jane, I feel like low key is my spirit animal. And then season three got really boring for me. I was just like, she got in an accident. I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't. It's just boring to me. And everybody's mother um, kind of um, gassed up. Yeah, so what ended up happening was, so I stopped watching it after season two. So I was watching, um, I was watching something on TV like two days ago. And they were talking about the series finale. So I knew it was ending, but I didn't know that it was ending right now. And the series finale had fucking Morris Chestnut in it. And I was like, how the fuck did Gabrielle and Morris Chestnut connect again? Like, what is this? But you have to understand, so, BET got like, you know, Morris Chestnut been held down by BET for years. No, I know that. So that's what made me be like, you know what? Let me go back and let me watch season four. So that when I watch this last season, I know what the fuck I'm going on. So I'm like halfway through season four within a day. Because I was just watching it all last night. Okay, time. was it a part that she was dating that comedian? Yeah, so that's where I'm at. Okay. So she was dating this... And I like she got with the pretty eyes. She was dating... Oh, Michael, really? Less than because it's trouble. But she was dating this UK guy, this British guy, who was a comedian. And I'm at the point where I'm like, yo, she's definitely about to curb this nigga. And it's going to make me so upset because he's so nice. And he has two kids. Like, his baby mom's is cool. She's gay. They all are kumbaya. And I just know Mary Jane's going to fuck this shit up. It makes it oh, you get to the part. Oh no, mm, mm, mm. no, mm, mm. can't trust those pretty boys, niggas. Be with the pretty eyes. Mm. They get you. You use with green eyes, right? Yeah. 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 How you know? Because he thinks he's Michael Ealy, but he's obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, obviously not. That's a now, far fact. Somebody yeah. was like, "Are you turning the roster still?" I'm like, "Yeah." No, you just said yeah and say yeah. This is the show, guys. All right, so we are going to open up. Speaking of BET. Speaking of. What? What's the correlation? The first topic is. <laughs> there was actually, oh, uh, I guess. Um, so our OMG moment of this week as we open up behind Gorilla's position is, nigga, really? Like, really? Nigga, like, what are we doing? So as everyone knows in the wrestling world, Booker, Booker T has this Hall of Fame podcast. And his special guest recently was no other than the immortal Hulk Hogan. He ain't black, so he's not immortal. Okay. Well, that's why 
I did the quotations, but all right, cool story. Um, so Brooke and T had invited Hulk Hogan to come on to his podcast, chop it up, and of course they were going to talk about the incident where Hulk Hogan on Did tape you talk about when like um, said nigga? Brooke and T called him a nigga? No, no, no. Well, I don't know actually. So yeah, I don't really yeah, watch. Yeah. But they did bring up when Hulk Hogan did say nigga and was talking about how his daughter was, you know, dating. She probably was fucking that black dude. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't want my daughter around this nigga, blah, blah, blah. You know, just really like... And so in in the interview, in the podcast, it came off as like, so Hulk Hogan didn't remember him saying that, but the evidence shows he did say it. So his issue more or less is like, he, he wants the world to forgive him. He wants his forgiveness, like a like white blanket, you know, over it because it's been almost 13 years that we've been talking about Hulk Hogan saying nigga. <laughs> so, my question to you gentlemen as we open up Girl Up Behind Girl's position is, do we ever forgive Hulk Hogan? I gotta go first on this one. It's kind of like, <clears throat> as far as, this is how I view it, all right? Do I, do I forgive Hulk Hogan as a character? Yes. Because the character, like he said, Hogan and Terry Taylor, that's his last name, right? I definitely don't think his last name is Taylor. But okay, just call him but like... Terry. Terry. You know, Terry Taylor, right? His last name is not Taylor. It sounds cooler with Terry Taylor. No, know? I'm pretty sure someone else's name is that. Fine, fine, fine. Um, um, Terry Hogan, you know. Okay. Terry, it's kind of like we want, like I forgive him as the character, but him as a person is kind of like, how he did about it makes him not really forgiving in my eyes. Because you could have literally went to Power 105, I-97, covered all your bases, and talked about this on black stations. Whoever his PR team was terrible. He probably is sorry, but you waited so long to go on his apologetic tour to say something about it. Now, my question to you, I thought you got all that pain to tell that kid. My question to you is though, if when it did happen, or you know, a few years after it, like a year or two after it happened, or whatever, or when it hit everyone knowing, do you think him doing like that, I guess that apologetic tour, would we have been receptive at that time? Because that's the thing too, when people, and even in a day to day life, like a regular life, if someone apologizes to you, so let's, we all know some fucked up individuals in the world, but when people forgive, like, you have you yourself have to be receptive to that. You have to be prepared. Of course, to accept that. Okay. So my question to you is: so if he would have done that, would we, as I guess the culture, would we have forgiven him then? Because we, I, I don't yeah, think I, so. Like I feel like how that when is the when is the perfect time to, to like when's the perfect time to do anything? You know, when's the perfect time to apologize? When's the perfect time to do anything? There's no perfect time. Because people always feel like you gotta do it according to what everyone else says. If you just went out there and said, you know what, this happens, this, that, the third, blah, 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 I had an honest conversation about the whole incident and saw that, how, like, yo, I'm really I'm sorry, show that vulnerable side of him. Maybe we've been more respective instead of you coming back years later, WWE getting a lot of I'm sorry, this ain't looking like, nah, nigga, like, yo, you should have just honestly had this He should have did this years ago. Now, a part of me looking at as far as it's like, I got you the same energy across the board. The same exact way that I came into Kevin Hart's defense and said that, you know, that happened years ago, get over it. The same way that I feel with the whole situation, I look. At this point, you either gonna keep on holding it over his head or let the man just move on from it. Okay. And if you do feel the type of way, yo, listen, I'm gonna do what he did for the business. I don't have to always remind that person what he did a thousand and one time. All right, Hogan, you cool? Yeah, this, that, and third. I won't take no pictures with him, you know? You know? You know, that's as dangerous as me dating a white woman. You know? Same like levels. Um, but... Same level. Sure. So, this is why I feel like the wrestling side of me would never forgive him. Me as a person, it's forgiven, it's forgotten, let's move on, to, um, let's move on, Terry. I'll be watching what you do for this moment on. Because I gotta be fair. He has done a pretty WWE was riding out like now nah, we ain't fucking with this nigga no more. But then of course we got men in black, so nope. forget whatever happened. We're gonna bring Hogan back because we feel like he's gonna be the biggest draw in Saudi Arabia. Let's do that. 
oh, let's bring her back from WrestleMania. Let's do that. So what are your thoughts on Hogan this time around with this interview with Booker T? So Hogan, in my eyes, is I can't forgive Terry. I never had a problem with Hulk Hogan, the character. Hulk Hogan, the character, is one of the greatest characters in sports entertainment ever. I will get he there. brought wrestling to the mainstream, brought sold out WrestleMania 1, sold out WrestleMania 2. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He did phenomenal things. Now, Terry as the man, the man that's behind Hulk Hogan, I haven't fully forgiven him because he hasn't fully apologized. As, well, as you look at the statement that he, that he said, and I don't know if you've read it, but he says a couple of things here was like, you really still didn't apologize. He goes, well, I mean, that was a lot of people don't understand. People can say a word or make a mistake, and that doesn't mean that's who, you, who they are. First things first, words hold, mean, something. mean something, and words hold weight. Mm-hmm. The word that you said was a very negative word, and it's a very racist word. That's, the one, that's, that's how you got to start off with that. So you haven't apologized for saying that word. You said it was just a word. So you're diluting the meaning of the word and, and, and the magnitude of this word. Mm-hmm. You just knocked that, that word down. You know, the people that keep bringing it up and keep pushing it forward, those are people I worry about for me. The people that keep worrying it, that keep pushing it forward are the people of color. Right. And people who are allies of people of color. So now you're like, oh, you're, you are, once again, not apologizing. You're trying to downplay this whole situation. A little bit of a water down. You're, water, you're watering it down. It was, and for me, it was a brilliant delayed reaction, I mean. That's kind of like why I asked you. I, I had said, use, I had said dot, 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 use the words, dot, 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 and it was now going on almost 13 years. It was, in, it was set in 20, 20, 2006. I was made aware about it five years ago. To tell the truth, I don't remember that conversation, but definitely was me, and I definitely said it, and I mean total idiot. Totally out of control, bad situation. There's a million excuses for it, but it was me. I said it. I've tried to be accountable for it. Mm, Hold on. Debatable. So you've tried to be accountable for it. You haven't apologized. And did he go on a run, on a whole um, run, a PR run? Yes, he did. He went to every boys and girls club in America, took pictures with black people, did a bunch of stuff with black people mm-hmm. to try to say, oh, I'm f- I have black friends. Right. Again, bad PR team. No, and that's, and that's not the point. So you go around. Hold on, hold on. I, hold on. I'm, baby, not, I'm not. I'm not. Hold on, hold like on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, wait, you wait. have to explain yourself almost like 13 years ago. No, later. no, that's not the point. That's not the point. Come it's on. not explaining stuff. It's apologizing mm-hmm. fully. He has fully not apologized because the room behind, behind this, when he went to, when he got accepted back to WWE, when he was in the locker room, he said, watch what you say. This could be cameras around. Never fully apologizing. Supposedly, Biggie had a conversation with him and said, you know what? Let's forgive him. But the thing is, black people are the most forgiven people. They will forgive you. Even if you don't fucking mean it. And that's the problem in this whole situation. Where this man has not held himself accountable for saying something fucked up. This is what bothers me. I can understand. People make mistakes. People do certain things fucked up. And it happens. But you don't hold yourself accountable. You never fully apologize. Because it's not one of the statements that he fully up. And I listened to that damn interview. And he did not apologize really. He kept watering down the situation. Bro. I, the Bro. You are one of the biggest icons of sports entertainment. You are heroes to a ton of black kids. And using that word and not fully apologizing for that word is a fucking problem. You're an icon. And I know people make mistakes. He did not apologize. And this is what bothers me. We keep letting him go because you know what? Black people are fucking forgiving. We forgive. Um, actually, I don't know. But the whole situation, we just cancel him out. We don't care for him. We don't even acknowledge him. I bet you at Medline Stadium, probably everybody. Yeah, because of. I'm pretty sure. People were cheering for him. People were cheering for him because of that nostalgia. Yeah. Like people, like, and that's the thing, you gotta realize. And it's something that um, I had saw on someone's Instagram the other day when someone had listed like their top 10 or whatever of like all the time that they love. And it was a black guy. And it's number one was who? Hulk Hogan. And then number three was, was Macho, and I had an issue with that. So I made a comment. I was like, actually, Macho should be a little higher than that. But he was just like, my childhood person I looked up to growing up was Hulk Hogan. I'll see you this way. With the whole situation, it's kind of like, it's not a black and white thing. It's more of an issue than how that life celebrities look at them as idols. We worship them. 
Literally, like, without realizing that, everybody puts these celebrities on higher pedestal than we should. And this is not only in the black community, white community, Spanish community. It's still an issue, though. It's still an issue. The problem is if you're going to idolize somebody and put them on that pedestal, they have, they have a responsibility. Shit. And you know what? The Kevin Hart situation that you did bring up, he did apologize. He said he was wrong. He, he said, said he, sorry he, he still said sorry. He still said, I'm going to move up. on. That's different. He took accountability. Hogan has not taken full accountability for what he said. He I, just watered down everything. I understand that. I'm not defending him. But it's just like, yo, when it comes to Hogan, I don't care for him. But the thing but is, that's, you, 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 that's just you. Love. That's just you. What I'm trying to tell you is that how big of an icon he is. What year are we in? We're in 2019. And he is still relevant. Because that's what how, that's how much impact he had on sports entertainment. So what are you going to do? And the thing is, he has to apologize. He can't water down the situation. It's like, yo, I smacked your mom. It's my bad. You know. You know. I mean, I just think at this point, if, if Terry... I just said, you know what? I really don't want my daughter fucking with them black nigga at the time. Like, if he was just kept out of a buck, I'm like, oh, you know You know, I can't, I can't get mad at that. I can't get mad at that. I caught a situation with this way, right? Really, that's really what it is. Okay, cool. But I caught a situation this Terry way. Terry did not want his, his okay, daughter cool. to have some black dick. That's really I caught a situation this and way, it, too. And it's okay. As a dad, you want to be protective. You want to say which, you know, whichever way you want. And that's fine. I caught a situation this way. But take accountability and say, you I know, I see said this it. way. I caught a situation this way. And I, I speak in a grand, a grand I, I see it in a grand spectrum this way. I see the bigger picture. Maybe... I'm not defending him, but I see it as part as it's like a lot of people don't know how to um, apologize properly. And probably that's his weird way in his head. It makes sense. That's, I mean, you know what? In a sense, because there are people that will say, I apologize. And then you got people that say, my bad. And <laughs> someone says, my bad to me. To me, I take it as, oh, you still don't give a fuck how I feel. I apologize. You got to take that decision. No, but then, but then I, it brings up another issue. This is why Macho Man had a problem with Hogan. Hogan has a mad, has a huge ego. Like and, and that is, no, no, and that's the problem because he doesn't want to take account. That's when the ego kicks in. Because you because he has not been empathetic to the situation. To be empathetic, you have to take your ego off the picture and, and understand something. And that's what he has not done. Make sure you put that in the clip. Put that in the highlight reel. Yeah, because that's what he has not done. Real. It's being empathetic to to people and understand, like, yo, I really messed up. Let me take my ego to the side. He's talking with his ego. He doesn't want to look bad. And you know what? Shout out to Booker T for honestly giving him that platform because I really don't think no one else would have did that. He talked to Biggie and Biggie has tweeted he'll forgive him. But and, I, and the thing I about really it, think the thing about it, that's what I'm talking about. Booker T forgave him. Biggie has forgiven him. That's what, how we are, people of color. We forgive. And you know what? A part of me is going to end up forgiving him anyway because it's going to pass on. But a part of me is still mad because you know what? This, this dude was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. I followed everything he did. But see, that's the thing. And I that's why like, it hurts. But see, I feel like that's not the issue. But I think that as wrestling fans, and it goes to really any wrestlers, like, we, and it's like wrestlers, rappers, and entertainers, period. So that like, goes back to what I said separate, earlier with that. We literally put them on pedestals. Not pedestals. No, but it I'm, is a pedestal. No, because I'm, honestly, saying, though, because what like. What I'm saying was because, that as, as fans, we see, two, we see two different, we don't see two different people. We just see the wrestler. And, and I understand I have to move That's out right. of, I have to move out of it. But the thing about it, you as being an icon. And it's not like on a small scale. You're on a major. Kids looked up to you. Kids that look like me and you and you looked up to you. Because they looked up to him. I never looked up Hogan. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking because you guys have seen it in this one little spectrum. This is no, very. I get it. It's, this it's, is very. No, we important. get it. No, we I'm get not, it. We get it. What you're saying, I'm not. We're not. But that. it's just like. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is that at the end of the day. And I and as a I'm saying as a wrestling fan, I never give a fuck about Hogan. Like Hogan was never my favorite. I never looked up to him. I didn't care. Blase, blase, blase. When the whole nigga situation came out, I said he's just being a white dad that did not want his daughter to have some black dick. Yes. And that was that. And that's fine. And, and, and I feel like as Terry, as the man, you need to own up and apologize. Yes, because it will take it will change the game. It will change the game. Like yo, I really messed up. And you know what? I I'm okay if you're like yo, I have no problem with black people. It just I prefer my, my my daughter dating a white guy. That's nothing wrong with I'm that. I'm saying because this you way. Have, listen, because you got Spanish people that they parents they prefer to with Spanish people. You have people that do arranged marriages. They, again, they want it with that particular people. Again, how I see everything, 
everything out of grand spectrum is I ain't checking for Hogan. But I'm a type of person where like, yo, he said what he said. Like, I'm on some like, yo. You want some whatever. What it's whatever. Brother, what your brother is saying. Like, I don't care for this because like, listen, I'm not listening to for nigga say but racist in, in, stuff. In, in the bigger picture though, as if you're, if you're being an icon, that's like if The Rock went around and said the most racist shit ever. I don't say um, um, Uncle Tom, nigga. That, not even Uncle Tom. Just saying but you really calling crazy. him a name that says that you, you have a problem with him. That just, said, that just said it right there because you have an issue. I have a problem with anybody that who is black that go against us. Like, at the end of the day, though, son, you black and you cooling it up out there, I'm going to say your behavior, you being a coon. Your behavior... But you shouldn't care. You shouldn't, you shouldn't care because he's an icon. Why, but why are you putting him on a pedestal? He's a regular dude. It does not... Okay. He did something. I'm gonna say what he did. I'm gonna move on from it. I'm not gonna be on some like, the, the oh my gosh, oh my god, this person did this. Let me go on Twitter but and we complain what? about you? it. No, I'm just a different breed. I'm the type of person where like, yo, I see this. I understand this. I have conversations with everybody. I know so you how you feel about it. I move on from it. And I understand what you're so, saying, but he keeps whole, coming what? back up. He keeps coming back up. And the thing is, you're doing this, and there's a, that's an issue. Because you haven't apologized. What so, what you're, so what you're saying is, yeah, we can forgive him. We can let it go. Let's but he keeps it. coming in. He keeps, keeps coming in. He keeps coming in. This is an issue. Because you haven't forget. Because you haven't said sorry. And I understand you guys are saying, yo, who gives a fuck? Let's move on. No, it's not even that. It's just I get, but you, I, yes. I get what you're saying where you get it. And we're going to move on. You, you have a platform, yet you still haven't used it pro- properly. That's your issue. Your issue is like, we've gone through the ringers, we, he said it, he's acknowledged it, let's move on. So it's just everybody's perception is going to be different. Because WWE clearly has but, to move on from this. But the thing, but it took them a minute to really fuck with that nigga again. Okay. It I'll took see, them a minute. But when it happened, they moved on from it, they cleared out the company. But see, no, but. They haven't really moved on from it because from if it. they really did move on from it, he would have been around a lot more. He definitely would. He would have been around yeah. a lot more. Because at, at, at WrestleMania, he came out, and you never saw him again on the show. Nope. You never saw him on the end because you and know you what? Know what? If, if it was, if they really, really wanted to make Hogan a big deal, he would have been the host of WrestleMania. I'm going to say this. He would have been okay, the, the lead up to WrestleMania. All right, of course. He been I would say it this way, but like, what I mean that they moved on from it, did they cost them big money? Nope. They still got that Fox deal. They still got that Saudi Arabia oil money. They still got all of this. They still oh, but that stuff was in the, the works so, before Hogan. Hogan. So it didn't matter. It's just like, thank you, you did in the past. He was one of the pillars. This, that, the third. It didn't cripple the company to the point where, like, how that, dang, we got to do blah, 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 blah. We got we to gotta cancel our WWE as an entire company. No, it didn't. No one boycotted WWE. But see, we but like no, WWE but it got for, to, like, reasons no, such as a bad pay-per-view. The thing you was, know, is, is that you have to title. realize, like, if you have, and you're trying to be a more diverse company, and you have superstars in the background who feel uncomfortable, who feel away, you don't think that was the catalyst of why Hogan got ripped off every fucking thing? That had a lot to do with that. When you're a publicly no, I'm traded not company that. I'm not and you're trying that. to you're trying to increase your diverse portfolio and that shit pops Because up, they have an issue with that. that they have an issue with no, that. I understand that, but it's just like okay, this is how I see it though. Yo, Hogan doing that. He was he, Hogan doing that. It was not. He was currently wrestling at the moment for WWE. It happened when he was in TNA. It happened when he was in Impact. So him as a person separated himself from the company as tired. He just got back to the company. You, you forget that. No, but you well, never essentially. Wait 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 wait, 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 wait. If you're just as iconic as Hogan, you're never gonna disassociate yourself from WWE. Of course, period. of course, of course. I see what you're saying though, but I'm also seeing it this way. It was just like racism problem was way before Hogan. Michael P.S. Hayes, we all know he said the Bobby last year. you mean? But moving on, let's talk about good old AEW coming out with a five-year workout plan. Um, you have the president, Tony Khan, recently was at an interview and was trying to explain their five-year plan, which I think is really good for a company to have. I mean, you're going to have your highs mm. and your lows, but you should always have a plan. So they want to be able to build up a brand. They want to be able to build up a roster. They want to create where it doesn't matter wins, losses. It's about the actual performance. It's about the show as a whole, which is, you know, not a bad thing. And before I do present my questions to the boys, I do want to give a special shout out to Private Party, who recently announced that they have been signed to AEW. 
that and if you if you live in the New York New Jersey area and have seen these two amazing men mm -hmm. grow through HOG and other wrestling independent wrestling promotions to see them and be able to be signed to AEW that is a huge accomplishment so us at the Job Taste Podcast want to congratulate Private Party because that A representation matters and B that shit is hot because it's from our own backyard it is New York natives showing and wrestling in, in a different platform so it is amazing so I do want to get that quickly I want to tell you a story about them. So they used to come to Mimos. They used to come to Mimos mm -hmm. to all the wrestling events, and motherfuckers were play fighting outside. I actually remember that outside of Mimos. I remember that somebody like scoop slam somebody, and I knew Daquan was different from Private Party when he off the standing did a backflip. Frog splash on a kid. Like just stand. He just flip to, flip to the back. The belly to belly. Quickly. Just, I was like, this kid I is... I remember. Right outside. Yeah, this kid is different. No, but yeah, that's so a quick no, story that, about him. That is super... I think it's an amazing accomplishment for the two of them. So, shout out to Private Party. But um, once again, AEW is coming out with this five-year plan. And they are coming up on their really first big event, Double or Nothing, out in, in Vegas. And actually, both. We can talk about both topics. So they actually do relate um, mm -hmm. so my question to you guys is what do you think is going to be a pro and a con for AEW within the next five years? And then the second question will be, it's going to be in return. So, so it was announced recently that Goldust, AKA Dustin is now left WWE and it was always rumbles of him leaving like not resigning but we found out that he will be facing his own brother so we're gonna get the brother versus brother match that WWE definitely dropped the ball on um we're gonna get it for double or nothing so my question to you gentlemen is is, is this what type of match do you see that being so first question is what is going to be a pro and a con for AEW going through the next five years and then the second question will be what are your thoughts on this match, Cody versus Dustin? Well, the biggest pro from AEW right now is that they're new. People like new stuff. People enjoy something fresh, refreshing. And, and they right now, they're going off the whole something refreshing, something different from WWE. The con is you have a lot of wrestlers running management. I'm still against that in some type of way. But like everybody says, Cody... I think WCW actually just burned us for a yeah, while. Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean TNA too, um, in some ways. TNA... In some ways. In some ways. In some ways. So, in some ways. The end. that's one of my cons. Once again, everybody's like, well, Cody's different. He's a business person. But you literally have the Bucks, Kenny, and Cody running the asylum. Mm -hmm. All who, who are all, all wrestling on the card. Yes. Now... Given I've seen Kenny's an, an, is an amazing wrestling mind, super freaking creative, so it might be a pro, to say the least. But though that's my two things. Okay. Now Thanks. with this match, Your thoughts on the match? Super excited! It's super fucking dope, and people don't realize Goldust can still go, go in the ring. Sure can. Well, he is He's sober. He's on that same level as, mm -hmm. as Ron Killings. I get. I tell yeah. you that. Still got talent. Still can move. Flexible as flexible as hell. Like you see them in those mix max tag tag matches, you're like, yo, this is great. Yeah. The dude is great. It's gonna be an exciting match. I hope Cody's hundred percent with the knee and, and, and he can do some stuff. It should real really be, in my opinion, a brawl. They should really book it as a brawl because they're mad at each other, real aggressive, real angry, and that should be something dope. But you're still mad at though, Cody. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Show that. Show why why each of each other is mad at each other and have that. That silvering, that silver, that sibling rivalry, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a dope thing. It's super exciting, and I'm happy they put it on the card. Yeah, so that was AEW been. viewing party at Legends. Cheap plug, but um, I was really surprised because of Cody's injury, and then they didn't. I know it's been like probably like touch and go, so I think they definitely calculated, you know, announcing this match now because. Definitely the, you know, the rumors of Goldust leaving WWE was always, it was back in January. So people didn't know. So I think him trying to get healthier, they wanted to wait it a little bit. Your thoughts, pros, what is, what do you think is going to be a pro and a con within the next five years for AEW? And what are your thoughts on the brother versus brother match? I mean, listen, 
I don't get my real opinion on AEW because we go through this every time we talk about yeah, it. Yeah, which is so fucking frustrating because, because I cannot. I had. I have to be very unbiased to be no, just open but, to but it. This but asking a pro and a con is not about bias. It's what you think is going to be a pro and a con. Okay, it actually, it's a question you can't answer. The con is obviously keeping people's entrance because nobody talk about Lucha Underground no more. Well, because Lucha is not around. See, keeping people entrance. It was hot for a little bit. You know, had all. No, but they the the problem with Lucha though was they was losing money. They was losing their top people. They didn't. It wasn't even losing like an interest. It just was they were losing. No, like, they weren't paying them. But that's what they I'm saying. Weren't they weren't paying them like, well. That's what I'm saying. But money and losing people was the downfall of Lucha. Okay. Not in so much like we like not so much of us watching it and us being like, oh, this is boring. Let me not watch this anymore. Lucha was like, good. It was a it was a company issue. I just feel like. You need to keep people entrance. Regardless of what it is, though, like, how can you get Soccer Mom Sally to watch your product? It's not for Soccer Mom Sally. How can you get Soccer Mom Sally... Soccer Mom to, Sally that likes wrestling. Let's just do it. How you get Soccer Mom Sally to switch over her regular schedule week to watch AEW? How do you get her to deviate from WWE? How do you get her to just go from over there? AEW is not for WWE fans. For, more, for a lot of WWE fans. Because what you're saying right now is, it's a different, it's a different part. Like the people who fuck with AEW, which got sold out within a few minutes, it's not the same people that's gonna go. Not the same people that go to WWE. A lot of people that love AEW or are excited by AEW. I'm gonna cut you off right now. I'll say it this way, yo. Listen, regardless of what it is, though, yo. At the end of the day, as a wrestling fan, WWE fan, you're gonna look like across the TV. Like, what is this other brand of wrestling? You're gonna look regardless as a WWE fan. That's how a lot of people find about ECW and WCW. They start off from WWE and you branch off to something else. That's not everybody. Everybody starts with ECW. But regardless of what it is, though, everybody's going to still look at it. I get what you're saying. It's going to be a Everybody's going to still look at it just like with this. Exactly. Just like with this way. With basketball, you, I'm a diehard Knicks fan. But if I see OKC fan, an OKC game, let me see what some Russ is doing over here. Let me get a little interested and get a little invested into it. It does not separate the fact that I'm still a diehard Knicks fan, but that cost my entrance. What if, like, Soccer Mom Sally passing through, they say it's a Wednesday night, she passing through there. Gold Dust. What are you doing over here? Oh, shoot, is that crazy? Okay. But he won't he... be Gold Dust in AEW. You give me something. Wow, <laughs> stop doing that. Because obviously, you are not called the person what they know now. You want to see them as what you recognized from before. That's Gold Dust. Well, no, well, technically, because Chris Jericho's always going to be Chris Jericho. So if somebody saw AEW saw Chris Jericho, they would be like, that's Chris Jericho. But. I'm talking about... How but to, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so, the gonna pro see would be this. keeping the interest of the fans. Copy. Pro. The pro is... Is it gives a new formula how to do business. A wrestling business. Because if they do it right, they do it how they according to how they really... They stick to their plans. Stick to their five-year plan. How, however that may be, that could be revolutionary for the game, B. Revolutionary. Because, again... There's formulas people tend to follow, and a lot of those formulas they have revolutionized. Okay. And everybody talks about, oh, all these people run the asylum, blah, 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 the image run the asylum. You forget who's also over there? People that who are not wrestlers, or people who are former wrestlers who are not going to step back in the ring. Billy Gunn and JR. There's other people I may not know about. But who's other their people. boss, though? Their boss is wrestlers. The top guys in the company who brought the company so together you don't think are wrestlers. That, so you don't think that how that Billy Gunn's going to check them? You don't think no, that JR? No, he's not. Boss. No, he's not. Because that's my boss. They definitely not about that. It, 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 I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. Because he'll again, check them in some type of way. Maybe he might say it, something. It won't be in terms of like I'm gonna check you, boo. But it's gonna be like a. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. This that. is my idea. But however, yeah. you have to realize that the guys that make the ultimate decision are wrestlers. Of course, and I understand that though. But at the end of the day, this is why they're surrounding other people who's smarter than them. Because if they really were selfish, they'll say, "Nah, we got these other young guys that have nothing about that." They get someone younger that. I could just manipulate. They got guys like, nah, I'm gonna tell them the truth. Because everybody loves JR. You hear college stories, you just like, yo, JR came, he did the, cause JR, because like they had an issue with it. Let's throw it back. The Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys, I think Dudley Boys, I'm not too sure. They had an issue with their payout with TLC. Okay? 
JR being the guy who dealt with the locker room, how to deal with that. He's used to confronting people, doing the hard battles. But it's all about also, too, we don't know exactly what position. Like, JR's position was executive, was an executive in so, WWE. once again, with AEW, I, I, know, I know, I don't know if he's just doing commentary or if he's going to be behind the scenes like that. Like, he's at an age where that may be the only thing he want to do. He's not Jim Cornette. He's not Bruce Pritchard. Like, he's not going to be the guy that wants to be in front of the camera but also want to be behind the scenes. Understandable. So, is it, we, we don't know that, and this is right? and, and this is why I try to keep my opinion out of this. No, but you should have an opinion about it because guess what? It it is changing. It is revolutionary. And I don't think sitting here is the same one like I don't I don't know. I'll wait, I wait, I wait. It it in a sense it does you a disservice because you should have an opinion about it. Like you you are gonna be what's gonna move the needle for AEWs and that's what you have to understand. Like us as fans, like Regardless of if you just like WWE, whether you just like whatever the next five years in terms of wrestling, this is probably the best time to be a wrestling fan because things are changing every day. Whether you like, I had someone hit me up the other day when Private Party announced they signed AEW and had told me, but I had already knew like for a few days or whatever. And I was just like, I told you a while ago. No, well, that's what, so I already knew, but I had, I told him I knew only a few days ago. But it was just like a person hitting me up and like, yo, Private party. I just seen them at HOG. They just got signed in WWE. I gotta go to more indie shows. I gotta go do this. I gotta do that. Okay, like, that like goes that. back to what I said a while but ago. No one's, Yo, no one's, saying, some... no one's disagreeing with what you're saying. Is what I want you to know. I get what you're saying, like keeping the interest in, in knowing, like, oh, you see these guys, and now you see them there. It now that 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 perks your interest. Like, I I get it. I'm not negating that. But what I what I want is that I want you to understand, like. Having an opinion matters. Like I, I know I get you. Like we'll see what happens. But having an opinion also prepares you in a sense to understand what actually could happen. You know why exactly I don't have an opinion on AEW? Because right now it's a shirt company. They have a cool design shirts. That's I the only that. huh? Yeah. Well, actually, it's the company that just sold out fucking Vegas. No, 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 no. It's the I company understand that's that. doing a show in Jacksonville. Uh, no, I understand that. Again, so it's not just, just a t-shirt company. Right now, it's just a t-shirt. company. So we are one week removed from the Superstar Shakeup, and even after the Superstar Shakeup, we still got some shakeups that happened where Andrade ended back on SmackDown, and so did Aleister Black and a few other people. And now this week past Raw, we found out that Samoa Joe is now on the Raw brand. So my question to you gentlemen, um, let's do one up and down from this week. Um, from Raw, I feel like this, it's just, it's still unstable. Both brands, but what are you guys' thoughts? Don't all go at once. Man, listen, man. Real talk, WD's program to this week was kind of like, they still trying to find an identity. You know? Like, especially with Raw, it's still lacking an identity. I, I felt like it was just a, a, a show that had a bunch of wrestlers on there just doing what they had to do. I guess the biggest up for me was the Bray Wyatt promo. And it was creepy. I feel like how that, like I said before, like I said before in the Black Door, it's just a simple fact like you cannot doubt this man Bray Wyatt. He went from Husky Harris, he went from a cult leader, he went to interdimension warrior, to now he's just Blue from Blue's Clues. No, he's from Steve from Blue's Clues, basically. He's Mr. Rogers. And the fact that you can tell that he's serious about this, he cut weight, cut his hair off, and he actually talked like a normal human being. And he put every little detail, every time you watch that video over and over again, different hints of something greater. So, regardless of you may say this, it may not be what your, t it's like, everything right now, the far as WWE-wise, promos looks the same, you know, everybody wanna do something in the back. The fact that he's opened up a new avenue in a PG era, and the fact that he's actually doing this, probably getting hints from every other TV character who does this. So, only place that could go is up. The only way that this could fail is WD, what they usually do, give them bad booking. Because the Wyatt, the whole Wyatt family, everything that he was doing was great if he was winning. You cannot be like the either of worlds and the next day you're losing to the next big person. How many pinfalls he took? Roman, John, Undertaker, who was not there for not in the whole program, and then he carried that program by himself with each and every week with different promos. And the fact that you let a man that who gets beat up by a part-timer and who probably drinks steroids for breakfast the year before that, you can get the win off of Bray Wyatt. We put to usher in the next either of worlds. So this man did everything right. 
but the booking was not on his side. Like, how many memorable victories you have of Bray Wyatt other than him winning the WWE Championship? None. But I mean, does it's it, like Meek says, win and losses. Like, does that all? Really yes, it matter? does. It does really matter because you have people like, and I think wins and losses really creates a greatness of a wrestler per se. On paper, yes, but I think, and and I always use Piper as the is as the greatest example because Piper was out here taking L's, but that didn't mean that he wasn't an amazing wrestler. Didn't mean he wasn't didn't do amazing. Promos and yeah, he wasn't one of the greats. Okay, at that era. but that always goes back to we're gonna appreciate everything that Bray Wyatt did years later. We're gonna appreciate Bray Wyatt's house, that little thing he had with Ray on. We're gonna appreciate that years later. We're gonna appreciate Sister Abigail, but right now, as you live in the moment, we don't appreciate that. No, but I think it's because I bet you, I bet you, people who was watching Piper probably thought that, oh my gosh, Piper's mad annoying. He always loses. Da da da. This that a third. Now, nobody remembers all his losses. They remember all the memorable moments that he did. If you really think about it, Bray Wyatt had memorable moments. A lot of memorable moments. Just that his memorable moments is not equal to his wins. He had a lot more losses. Another guy that who takes a lot of losses is The Miz. But he's kind of like in the Roddy Piper upper echelon where like he could still lose, but yet it doesn't affect him. On his next book, and I feel like Bray is the same way. But Bray doesn't have memorable, lengthy, memorable time with winning. The Miz, every time he has a title, lengthy times where like he's winning, lengthy times that he will not lose BS matches. Half the time, y'all here cheating. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But it it goes along with what the character is entailing. Like if they have the Miz set up as this egotistical like. It's about me, me, me. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna cheat and you're going to sneak to win. So that makes sense. With Bray, I feel like with the character, it doesn't, like, Bray doesn't need to win or lose to be great. He does need to win or lose to be I great. Do, I do think they dropped the ball when it was him and Taker. That's the only time I was like, yeah. So you think up. that, so you think that, so you think that, let me ask you a question, right? Everybody loves, everybody loves losers, right? Let's really break that down. Cool. But if you talk about a competitive sport, Wins and losses matter. Like literally, you can't be WWE champion losing to a jobber. But you can't be WWE champion inside of Elimination Chamber and win because that's what Bray did. So if it, but if, he was WWE champion. If the win, he was. He went into WrestleMania thirty. But he won Elimination Chamber. He won Elimination Chamber, not champion, left the ass champion. Right. But it wasn't the, okay. But again, this all goes back to what I be saying though. Bray don't have memorable victories. He has memorable moments. The Miz, even though the Miz, the Miz lose a lot, he has memorable victories. Dolph have memorable victories. They just have different. Oh, Dolph, that's a hit. That's that's debatable. Boom. I just think they Dolph, have different. world champion, he cashed in. Dolph, but he fought the, the Miz. The only reason why you remember that because it was the night after WrestleMania. If that shit would have happened the week after, okay, we okay, about? backlash, career versus title, Dolph. Dolph in that great TLC match you have to be with Luke Harper. But you have to be memorable in victory. A match. It's more not of a memorable victory. It's more of just a memorable moment, I think, or a memorable match. Like with Bray, you list all those matches, and even though he didn't win, they still will give me two memorable. memorable victories other than the Elimination Chamber. Uh, did he not beat Dean Ambrose in that Hell in the Cell on my trip? No, I think so. Exactly. Next. But I, I'm, I'm not the fan that cares about wins or losses. I'm just not. I've never been that girl. So because all of my, fa all of my guys, it, at that era, and I think the '80s and '90s, they kind of they, they hindered us because we didn't look at wins and losses. Then we just looked at when they won the title. So you shouldn't care if one Undertaker had that streak for so long and he lost it. But that's different, though. That's a streak. Like that's and that's a once a year thing. It's still you know what I mean? losses, that's still what it means. That's what it means. The other eleven months that Taker did that, he didn't lose a match or he didn't fuck up a match. Again, you know what I, mean? I see what you mean, but it all goes back to this. So I'm gonna stick to this. When you don't have memorable victories with your memorable moments, come on, you lacking something. But not every wrestling, not not all of your big moments are gonna be your big Ws. You gotta remember that. Too. But there's a mixture of both. Like you gotta uh, you. You, it depends on the person. Like, remember, like, one of the biggest things they talk about is um, Triple H and 
Mick Foley when it was like the the career versus title match yeah. at Royal Rumble and how that match is like one of the big like highlights of his career. He lost. But you remember that? But you also remember Mick Foley beating um um the Rock in yeah, um, Hot Rock. Time Heat and using the um the the four, I'm using like the the thing which you get to pin him. Right. That was a memorable victory. Or you remember him when him and The Rock won the tag team championship. That was a memorable victory. Well, once again, memorable moment and memorable victory are very two different things. Though. But you they need sometimes both of them. can be both. But no, you but you need hand both. in hand. But you need both of them hand in hand, though. I don't agree, but okay. Um, so you said up was Wyatt, down was what? Um. This Billy Kay presence, I hate the iconics, so they get it down. You hate a real tag team. Sucks. They whack. They not whack. And you know how I know you, they not whack? Because you don't like them. And guess what? That is their job for you not to like them. I watch them. I don't, they terrible. They don't entertain me at all. You watch it. I don't. I skipped their matches a long time ago. That's terrible. You should watch them. No, pretty no, good. No. All right, so Wilkins, one am one down from Raw. Um, one of my ups is, um, I think my biggest up is Robert Robert Roode. A lot of people didn't talk Wait, about it. What? I really enjoyed what um, what he did, like his his transformation going into that heel thing because he has always been a better heel. He's always been a better. Heel. And um, it's I'm really enjoying the potential of. Robert Rude. Even though the, it was, I don't know why they changed it, but that's where he started off. And because they, Bobby just sounds very like play like. No, it, it Bobby does Bobby sound like I'm like a face. Face, face name, and I understand. I get it. Bob, Bobby, and Robert are the same thing, so mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense. He shaved. He, he tried to do a new look. It's the ravishing Rick, Rick Rude type of thing he's doing right With now. A hint of Joy Ryan. Yeah. So. Um, you know my <laughs> thoughts on Joey Ryan. I know. Um, but at the same time, I really appreciate it, and I think there's something really good there. My down was the match between Becky and Alicia Fox. As you probably saw when I, my Facebook status, when I was like, oh, Alicia Fox looks great. But that botch at the end was so trash. That, was, that match was not what it was supposed to be. Once again, it might be Alicia Fox's ring rust. But or maybe it was, it was, it was just to put uh, Becky over. Or, or maybe to put Becky over, but Becky didn't look good either in that match. So I don't know whose fault was it. Because they both, because they probably don't have really good ring chemistry. Yeah, but it's also like you're professionals. It could have been a decent match. It was a horrible match. Yeah, no, I didn't watch it. So it, I watched it. I watched Raw up and down because I was tweeting for most of the day. Um, a quick little medium. I really enjoyed Lacey Evans. You know, I'm a fan. All these nasties out there trying to disrespect Lacey. That's about it. Yeah, you know what I what I do like is the I don't know what it is. I feel like they about to give Naomi like a little bit of a like I don't know yet, but they replaced Ronda's picture with Naomi's picture um, for like the raw promos. Yeah. So they have that. Well, they're gonna give. I think they'll give her a bigger push, and then also um, nobody talked about this was when after the, the their promos and was like, oh, we're gonna hop in the Uber, no drinking and driving. I don't think nobody called. I probably really didn't catch that, but that was really dope. That was a little funny thing, but uh, yeah. Smackdown, I enjoyed Raw, and Smackdown, in my opinion, I'm going to go to Smackdown. Yeah. Smackdown, Smackdown was was solid. Um, Lars doing his his typical thing was it's kind of, you know what it was. Braun did it for so long, and then they just really doing just replacing Braun with. With Lars. Yeah, because SmackDown doesn't really have a big guy. Yeah, so it, it is what it is. I truly enjoy Bailey's 15 minutes of fame on Raw. I mean, on SmackDown. That was my up. Her little promo that she cut. Like, after meeting Bailey, I'm really a fan of Bailey. Like, that's my biggest thing. I'm like all for her. Too bad she lost. I and mean, it is what it is. But I, en I enjoyed both shows. Their storytelling, they're really starting to push my money in the bank on both shows. Matches are coming. The matches are great. Like the potentials for all those matches so far, absolutely amazing. Yep, dope. Your thoughts on SmackDown? It was cool. It was cool. It was very Roman heavy. You know? Um, I liked it. Overall, you know me, I'm biased in SmackDown. I have no real, real, real downs. If Kevin Owens were really going to do this, he got to be, he, he got to be prized by the Because that's the best version of him. I don't believe him. Bron did it for so long. 
and then they just really doing just replacing Braun with with Lars. Yeah, because SmackDown never really had a big guy. Yeah, so it, it, it is what it is. I truly enjoy Bailey's fifteen minutes of fame on Raw. I mean on SmackDown. That was my up her little promo that she cut. Like you, after meeting Bailey, I'm really a fan of Bailey. Like that's my biggest thing. I'm like all for her. Too bad she lost, and it is what it is. But I en- I enjoyed both shows. Their storytelling. They're really trying to push money in the bank on both shows. Matches are coming. The matches are great. Like the potentials for all those matches so far, absolutely amazing. That's dope. Your thoughts on SmackDown? It was cool. It was cool. It was very woman heavy. You know, um, I liked it overall. You know me, I'm biased and smacked. I have no real, real, real downs. If Kevin Owens go really gonna do this, he gotta be, he he gotta be prized by a KO, because that's the best version of him. I don't believe him as the runaway heel, the one that who does sneaky stuff, be everyone's face, being friends. I don't believe him. No, prize fighter KO. That's what we need right now. I don't need Face of America KO. Prize fighter, the one that who came out with the NXT title and 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 and, and beat John Cena at the Money in Bank. So when I how I feel about everything is up and up, but I'm gonna see like the head like like the end game. I'm gonna do Coffee Dirty and make him end his title this quickly. What's gonna happen? No, I think Kevin may put him over. I think that may happen. I mean, again... I mean, we all... I mean, nah, as everyone... As I hate saying, they're going to definitely put the title on Roman by the time they go live. On but I kind of feel like how that is more... It's like... The focus is like kind of Roman heavy a little bit. It is. But that's because they're, they're building it in a way so that if not by SummerSlam, Roman is champion so that he's going into fall as champion. Unfortunately. Okay. It's not the best thing in the world, but... It's all about those dollar dollar bills and those ratings, and Roman is that guy. So, but what I don't like is I feel like they're they're kind of doing it where how um, Austin was, where he was the bad guy and he mm. was going against corporate, but then he became the corporate champion like down the road. I don't want that to happen to Roman because that'll be that's gonna mind fuck everyone. So. But all right, guys, um, as always, um, Sir Wilkins and Mr. Blackie, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, please stay tuned. We have um, yet to release, we'll soon to release our flyer for our Money in Bank Green Party on oh, May 19th. So oh, it's out. So please be on the lookout for that. I will post it. Hmm? Oh, that's fine. Um, so yeah, May 19th, which is actually my mom's birthday. Um, and we're going to be celebrating a few other birthdays as well um, during that evening. So make sure you are at Legends May 19th for Money in the Bank. Um, next weekend, HOG's um, Code Red. It is their joint event with Impact, and I think it's going to be a very, very good, you know, sight to see some, you know, people clash. So please make sure to come out, support your independent wrestling. Um, as always, I am Janelle from HR. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We're Out.